and welcome back to my channel, Eat Like an Egyptian. So today I'm going to show you one of my favourite desserts in the entire world and that is the delicious and the decadent omari. And this is an old fashioned Egyptian treat that just never goes out of style and it's filled with absolutely everything that you would want in a dessert and more. So it's warm and it's hearty and it's loaded with nuts and raisins and pastry and milk and it's got this luxuriously creamy topping so honestly who would say no to this absolute beauty and towards the end of the video i will show you a chocolatey adaptation to omari which i'm going to go ahead and claim as my own invention and honestly the chocolate marries so beautifully with this comforting classic making it an irresistible twist to a traditional family favorite and honestly looking at these two has got my stomach rumbling so let's get started So for this recipe, you will need 350 grams of puff pastry, 200 ml of double cream, 200 ml of extra thick cream, 700 ml of milk, 200 grams of nuts. I'm using pistachios, almonds, hazelnuts, a few cashews and some walnuts. 250 grams of sugar, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, 100 grams of coconut flakes, 150 grams of raisins, a 22 cm by 30 cm roasting dish, and we'll also need a food processor or grinder to pulverize the nuts. So to start off, in a pan, add the milk and sugar and bring to a boil over medium heat, stirring occasionally to make sure that it doesn't burn. Then we will bake the puff pastry, so cut the pastry into squares, and to save time, you can use ready rolled pastry sheets like I am here, but make sure to bring it to room temperature before using. Croissants or phyllo pastry also work well for this recipe, but I find that the puff pastry gives the omali lots of flaky layers of buttery crispiness that soak in the milk and the cream beautifully without disintegrating. Bake on a large baking tray at 180 degrees until golden brown. This took me about 10 minutes, but it will depend on the thickness of your pastry, so keep checking on them at regular intervals. While that's baking, we'll prepare our assortment of nuts by pulverizing them in a food processor or blender. I toasted mine first to release some flavor. Pulse until the nuts are as finely ground as you like, scraping the sides and corners of the processor bowl from time to time. You can use all kinds of nuts and feel free to adjust the quantity to your preferences. I personally prefer Omali to be choke full of toasted nuts that extra little crunch adds a contrasting texture to the tender softness of the pudding. Now that our puff pastry is golden brown, puffy and crispy all over, including the base, we are ready to put together our masterpiece. Start by adding a layer of puff pastry to the bottom of the dish, then add a generous sprinkle of raisins and coconut flakes. The chewy dried fruit adds a natural sweetness to the dish and they also become plump and juicy once they absorb the liquids we'll be adding and the coconut flakes add an incredible exotic and nutty flavour. Then add a layer of the nuts we pulverised followed by a light sprinkle of cinnamon powder then make a second layer of puff pastry, raisins, coconut flakes and nuts and a final light sprinkle of cinnamon. Now we will add the double cream and 1.5 teaspoons of vanilla to the milk and sugar and stir them well. Then it's time to drench the puff pastry and nuts mixture with our creamy sweetened hot milk. Wait a few minutes to allow the pastry to soak in the liquid, then top it with an even layer of the extra thick cream. And finally sprinkle a generous layer of nuts. And now it's time to bake it in the preheated oven at 180 degrees in the middle shelf for 15 to 20 minutes or until it's golden brown on top. And now for the rich and chocolatey adaptation of Omaali using delicious croissants filled with melty chocolate for some full-on indulgence. This is really easy to make and is ready to eat in 20 minutes. Start by tearing the croissants into medium-sized pieces then sprinkle with a layer of nuts. Now drench the mixture with the hot sweetened milk to which I added some cubes of milk chocolate. 
I only use about half the quantity of sugar that I used in the traditional Omaili recipe and I also added a few drops of vanilla but you can omit this step if you prefer a more robust chocolate flavour. Then pour the double cream followed by a layer of the extra thick cream. Now just sprinkle some of the nuts on top and we're ready to bake. Again this needs to go into a preheated oven at 180 degrees in the middle shelf for 15 minutes or until it's golden brown on top. Now our omali is out of the oven and it smells incredible. So let it cool for no more than 10 minutes or so as it is traditionally served hot and bubbling. I really hope that you give this recipe a try. Omali is truly a delight to make and it comes together effortlessly with just a few ingredients. And of course, it's a delight to eat with its creamy and chewy center surrounded by a crispy exterior. If you've never tried this dessert before, think of it as the ultimate bread pudding meets baklava. Now that sounds like a match made in heaven, right? If you prefer your omali milkier, you can enjoy it with some hot sweetened milk on the side or you can add an extra cup of milk before baking. And here is our chocolatey omali. Oh, the buttery crispiness of the croissant and the melted chocolate, simple, decadent and absolutely delicious. I'm certain that this will go down a treat with children and adults alike. Have you ever eaten something so good that it has you hopping around the kitchen? <laughs> I hope you try these recipes at home. While your waistline might not thank you for it, your taste buds certainly will. And please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.